This is Drop Tent Media Network. Two father comedians out of Philadelphia. Where's the dad? Dad. Where's the dad? Where's the dad? Yo, welcome back. Season two, Seriously Dead. All right, back. Another episode of Seriously Dad. We're going cybersecurity today. We're talking Wave of the future. The internet. AOL 2.0. <laughs> you remember that? I mean, I know our guest probably doesn't remember this. I don't know. But a- it was probably AOL 9.5 by the Remember time. they kept on sending CDs to the house. Is yeah. that, it was always like free 22,000 minutes on AOL. Was, and when you would hear that dial tone and, and you it got was through. just, and then you had to hear the and you were waiting. You were hoping that it would go through. It was like Neo going through the phone lines, man. That was a big deal. That's what, that, that's what it was, wasn't it? Neo was going. And then what the was lines? it? A- ASL, right? That was it. ASL. Was you know about ASL? American Sign Language. No, or? <laughs> no only no, no. Age, sex, location. Oh, the, the, okay. real, the original. A little bit of that. so <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Th- yeah. That was that was um that was it. That was swiping right before you swipe right. I mean, that was when you let someone know you were into them. That's right. If you answered that question, game on. And you you only knew you were into them because you could see their name. And really, There's they no were pictures. just like some you know forty year old dude from <laughs> Iowa getting with four, catfished with four screens open, just yeah. pull, just talking to whoever he could. Yeah. Yeah. That was um. Internet changed a lot. Yeah, Internet changed a lot. Do you okay? So would you say that is worse? The influence, like, because, you know, obviously thinking about what my kids can see on the Internet, is it worse what they can see on the Internet or is the bigger danger the people that they might meet and meeting a predator? What do you think is more likely to happen or more dangerous? And introduce yourself first. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Huh. <laughs> Hi, then, well, question. we were going to introduce her in the intro. That's my it's that's a two my part question. Friend. Yeah, <laughs> two part. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a cybersecurity consultant. I'm super excited to be here. Is that, wait, is that your official title? I'm a senior consultant at a cybersecurity firm. Okay. Okay. Um, to be specific, my job, I'm an ethical hacker. Um, my actual title is penetration tester, but I usually oh, avoid that one because. <laughs> oh, boy. Albert. The joke writes itself. So, oh, yeah. It's, why? Why the fuck would they name it? What, who na- I mean, you could. Whoever, someone named it, and then no one thought to even change the name. We're just going to leave it. Well, they started. They created ten other synonyms that she said, like, we're never <laughs> going to say what Larry did because Larry's not getting laid, and he was really <laughs> thinking about it. Now we're going to call it something else. No, that's crazy, though. I think it's an industry run by gamers who probably find it hilarious. I don't okay. know who picked that of all yeah. things. But okay. Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. But I like ethical hacker. I think that's because that's essentially, you know, is that what you said that you do? You like go and people hire you to uh, go to a website that they've created and say, hey, could somebody get in? Could somebody break in? Yeah. So we Great. basically will hack a company first and give them advice for how to fix that. Uh, basically try to hack them before somebody malicious does. That's awesome. Thank it's you. It's like when it you're a burglar. Yeah. You're like it's a fun. digital burglar. It is fun. It's very hard. It's not like what you see in movies where people are like, like dodging firewalls shit. and like <laughs> four hands on the keyboard to no. type faster, downloading the mainframe. Like that's not how it works. No, it's no, really just a bunch of people like sitting at computers. You're just kind typing, of quiet but... with your pieces in and just going to work. Yeah, maybe like yells of frustration, but Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now do you guys work so remotely? Or are you like do you remote, right? or do you work remotely or do you work? I'm in tech. It's optional. They got to nice. keep the techies happy, That's casual true. workplace. So I like that. I would say I'm mostly remote. Um, we do go on site a lot uh, when we're hacking companies. We'll actually show up and plug into an Ethernet port in the wall. So travel a lot. But, your your oh, services cool. are probably expensive. They are. Yeah. Right. Like if I call up, I'm like, hey, can you hack in my company? I'm a- I'm asking to pay you a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> okay. That's great. That's awesome. Good for you. Thank you. Yeah. And And you're pretty young. How old are you? I am 25. See, you're not supposed to ask a lady, but <laughs> but you I've taught her, so I probably could go wall. into the system and st- see how old you were. You can kind of <laughs> omit that. Are we not? Are we not going to? Oh, I know about we that? didn't. I talk mean, about there that. should be a level of pride right now, right? Because you taught That's her. Right. She, she was, was one, one of your students. students. Yeah, she, and was she is students. now like doing some badass shit. That's true, right? Like, well, I wouldn't have thought she like based on how like knowing her in school because I had her for foreign language. She took she 
went on a couple, at least one of the trips. What do we do? Italy and France. So I've run these trips. My wife right. and I would run these trips and take kids. I think we had like, that was a big trip. We had like 36 Sheesh. kids on that trip. Yeah. Um, yes. But yeah, so we, yeah, so we did a little traveling too, but I just never, I never associated Sarah with tech stuff. I don't know. Well, tech didn't exist. Yeah. I mean, well, it we barely, exi- it barely I mean, existed. It wasn't like it is But like, now. yeah, we were like, we were in a district that was like huge. It was like bring your own device, I think. And most kids weren't like popping open laptops in class or anything like that. You were always I a computer was, person? I was really into, honestly, language, English. Like that was okay. really my thing in high school. So I understand the surprise. But I always say my story in cybersecurity started with my birth announcement. It was... um the Hume family software just got an upgrade. He, Sarah Hume available <laughs> for that, beta testing in real? April. Yes, wow. that's okay. so yeah. funny. So that was I, groundbreaking shit back then. That was like that was like witty oh, and yeah. funny and wise, right? Like, it's, <laughs> it's like they're good. That's good. It was your so you have family that are into. My dad in software development. Okay, um, I basically told you better him, be if that was the announcer, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, I was like, I'm not a computer nerd, Dad. And he <laughs> was like, try cybersecurity. And if you hate it, I'll never bother you about it again. And I went to a summer camp and I loved it. And that's where I've been ever oh, since. Oh, that's fucking awesome. I think it's actually a more interesting blend of the creativity and the logic than people realize. I think it gets lumped in a lot with like math, science, STEM. Um, but I there's a big creative portion to it for sure. That's awesome. I would well, never congratulations. That. Yeah, that's crazy. Thank you. Yeah. you sound, you seem super successful. And that makes me happy. Uh, well, <laughs> and, and super smart. smart. Yeah. Um, so it well, was, I think smart and successful go hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. So back to the matter at hand, Jay, what was the question? Is it so, the predators yeah, so, we're worried about? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously us as parents, we got kids that are like, I keep looking at Neil and he's fucking me up. Like he's <laughs> bothering me so bad. Because he hasn't seen us in a while. We I haven't know. done this in I know. A while. I keep looking is. at him and I can't like be serious because <laughs> he's like doing this head thing. <laughs> so <laughs> no, like now I can't now because now he's not doing that thing. Um, okay, okay. Right. He's, he's enjoying like himself. Right? He's enjoying he's himself. I don't it was know. just a so big pivot. We, we, are we more worried back. about? Is it more worrisome that? I think that the big. I think the biggest danger is my personal opinion is what they'll be exposed to, and how that will shape the type of grown up they become. That's right. what my fear is, but there's also like what's coming the predators, for lack of a better term, right? That are coming to them or or. or which one, which one is worse? Which one is or more of a concern for you? Yeah, so um, part of my job is a lot of risk analysis. So I could kind of equate it to the difference between a car crash and a plane crash. A plane crash is a lot less likely to happen to you, but the impact's a lot higher for any one given instance. But people statistically are a lot more likely to be in a car crash. I particularly would prefer not to be in either one of those things. <laughs> but if I had to pick, I agree with you. I think the things that they're being influenced by and exposed to slowly over time and the way that changes the way they interact with people in the world is probably worse. Yeah. I got scared the other day. I finally gave in and my daughters have been wanting to play Roblox, okay. which is like a multiplayer online like minecraft you go into these worlds you have tasks you can interact yeah, with other people extremely popular with yeah some people very popular. uh and i had asked some of the i was teaching fifth and sixth grade the last couple of years and so my daughter had asked about it last year and i just said i just said no i immediately said no to anything uh because i just until i could go research it and then i asked some of the kids and they were like oh yeah you can put i told them what my ner- my concern was and my fifth and sixth graders were like oh you can put parental controls on there you can disable the chat because i'm my biggest thing was like, oh, are they going to eventually talk to someone? You know, my oldest being autistic. Like, what if, if somebody asked her location, she would give yeah. them the GPS or, coordinates. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, meet at the park, meet at such and they, such and park. She and she wouldn't yeah, think of it because she thinks she's making a friend. Right. And like, so that that, that was so uh, such a fear thing for me. And she's so good with technology. I didn't want her to not use technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was like, and then so yesterday, my other daughter brought up her pad that they both are playing it. And it had a list of usernames with like bubbles for text and phone icons next to it and she was like asking maybe if she could type a phrase to somebody and i'm like what are you doing how do you even have this yeah. and it wasn't the chat feature what i think it was was they had characters like it was like rudolph uh santa frosty so i think it was ai bots that you could interact with okay. but it 
in the moment, I thought these were like usernames of like potential predators that she was about to talk to. <laughs> yeah. And I freaked out. See, Lainey was, Lainey was big on the roadblock. She, she really isn't anymore. She, interestingly enough, she's really not into like the tablet and the phone right now. She's into like art, drawing, and like she soccer, which I am so thankful for because um, the whole thing scares the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. Who you can become and who can come. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Like I thought she life. was like They're immediately. I was like, scary. oh, we're done. Um, is is that happening a lot now, or is it start like people kids being tricked and like lured out of the house and given up information? Is that still happening a lot, or is it starting to like go down because of awareness? Yeah, it's interesting. I think sometimes the awareness that we teach people constantly changes. Like some people think that fishing is always a Nigerian prince asking for money. And so they think I'll never fall for a fishing scam, but then they get better. Like the, the attackers get better. As it's a cat and mouse game, really. Uh -huh. So I would say probably the tactics have changed. I think also there's such a pressure in social media it's like become an influencer i don't know what you would think from talking to your kids but how many of them want to be a content creator like yeah. posting videos of them dancing out and having a public profile and that encouragement yeah. to yeah. share your life online so, so can i answer i'm gonna answer that question i i i did encourage laney to if she was passionate about something she could use social media and and make it a career but it had to be based off passion it couldn't be like i want to go twerk it can't be like you know what i mean it couldn't be like i want to just influence bullshit but like because she's into art and she's in on the other things i was like if you wanted to pursue this and so you can make money off it and like have a career with it you can do that but it would be under strict parental like i i would be over the shoulder but i felt like because that because there is a thing with technology where it is a, the future, right? It is a necessity. Like, I don't think it's going anywhere. Right. So I didn't want her to be like giving up time where she could be doing something productive. But um, you gotta be careful. Like there, but there's so many, like, even if you're saying that, like her face being out there, like the locate, like the location of like the video, like, I mean, there's just so many things that you're giving away about yourself that is frightening that I don't think we think about sometimes. Like, you know, you post that you're going on vacation on Facebook. Now everybody knows you're not going to be there. Potentially yeah. some burglar knows that you're not going to be there. Like, I feel like that's the date. There's so many unintended consequences. It's not even like the major ones. There's like little stuff. Like, would you say that like even these companies that you work for, there's probably little things they do that we take for granted that are huge, like problems that we don't even realize we're giving up information to people. You know what I mean? Like I, I wouldn't think I didn't think to like, oh, I'm posting that I'm going on vacation. Well, you shouldn't do that until after you get back because you don't want right. people to know you're like, you could still tell people you're on vacation. Just wait till you get back. You know, but people were so free to start a live stream and start giving our information over that. Like, I, I even had cousins who won't let me put photos up if their kids are in the photo on social media, like because they don't even want their kids seen on social media. Do you think that? Do you think that not having? Well, I shouldn't say. I don't want to ask yes or no question. What are your thoughts on keeping someone's face, like a child's face, off of social media? What, what are your thoughts? Is that I think I think that's kind of become like a little bit trendy, like how we were like terrified of straws when really like recycling in general is something we should focus on. Yeah. We've like hyper focused on the child's face. Uh, I think to your point, having anything available on a public profile that anyone could see, you should always be concerned about. Um, like you said, not being home on vacation or if you post at the soccer field every day at seven, they know that's when the practice is. Someone could show up if they wanted to. So I think in general, it's just taking an approach of being conscious of what you're putting out there. Um, I think there's also, you know, child predators out there um, and people don't want pictures of their child's face out there because anyone can see it. Um, I think a lot of the time it's like how 
much does that bother you that maybe there, somebody out there you've never seen and never will see and, well that's saw a, that? i have my our my buddy gasper who was a guest on our season last one he just got a netflix show and he's had a huge his following on social media hit over like a hundred thousand now and i've noticed he stopped showing his kids faces he used to have some of the his kids in the video and now if they do happen to be in the video there's like a blur over it or something like that where i could see that he's like oh okay now people are seeing me on netflix or seeing me in 95 different countries i can't like I've noticed people in my life that I I'm like, oh, wow, these people are taking more serious things because I was doing videos with my daughters like, oh, smarter than a fifth grader thing. And I've stopped mm -hmm. doing those now. Oh, you don't do those Yeah, I stopped doing them. Like I would just made me think I'm just like because uh, that's the thing is like the, I don't want to say like it's because I'm on a true crime podcast frenzy. <laughs> oh, but shit. It makes me think like I'm, I'm just I'm trying not to be crazy. I'm trying to find the the middle line. And it's so hard because you're right. Like we have a tendency to hyper focus. And so like I don't want to go crazy. But at the same time, I don't want to be silly and not because, you know, if people who want to be TikTokers and want to be influencers and like, listen, I'm, I have a social media presence. I'm trying to do something with that, but I need to be thoughtful about that. That's why we don't live stream this. That's why we don't I don't do a lot of live streams because I, I don't want to overshare something that I can't take back. Right. I think I do a good job. Not not oversharing. I'm not great on social media, but I, I don't put like the it's not it's 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 not private or i guess it's a public whatever but it doesn't give a lot of information yeah, i've always thought about that like you know that concept of that like uh and being public or private and yo have you ever i'm, I'm sure this has happened to you and this is fucking weird have you ever like been at a show after the show before the show and someone comes up to you and they reference something that they've found out from social media and you're like, how the fuck do you? And then you're like, oh my God, I put that out there. And then you, you kind of puts you in check a little bit of like what you're sharing. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah, all the yeah. time. I mean, yeah. I have people, or even people that are like, like people that are like message me all the time now when I put something out there. I have one person like voice memos me something. Jesus. I'm like, why, why? Like I have to like listen to their voice, which is like unnerving. I just want to read it. I don't mind reading something and responding back. <laughs> like this person like wants me to like listen to like this 45 second soundbite that they put out. Yeah. I mean, it's nothing been weird, but I know Gasper and some other friends that I know have had some weirder accounts where people show up because he has a podcast that he does is pretty popular and they'll show up with stuff that they've talked about on the podcast like, yeah somebody yeah. showed up with the tomato planet helium when i was opening for him there because they mentioned it once as a brief aside and they mm -hmm. wanted to show that they were like listening or they'll yeah, people that'll yeah drive yeah. way out of the way to go to a show or like you went somewhere and they like, how did you like so and so linvilla orchards or some shit you're like how the fuck i mean i don't want to live my life like, by the like, one weird. person that might be the weirdo mm -hmm. but at the same time i don't want to leave my door unlocked uh you know and leave something open for that like you know what do you think's the common thing you would ask like for so the people who are having the fears like albert and i have this like what would you say that we should be doing on our own social media accounts to sort of like step one like either to do an assessment of what we currently have like how do i even find out like you know certain things that I, like if i have a facebook account like i'm sure there's something in the settings right is there something i should be looking at or well as a cybersecurity person i would say step one is put multi-factor authentication on that account so that they have to hit me up on a different device or my cell phone right okay um and i think in general and i guess it's different for you um both with having a following but i think the main thing that people have this thought process is well nobody cares about me like why, why would my data matter mm -hmm. nobody wants my account that's silly like but it's not about you it's about you in bulk so like people getting hacked their facebook or their instagram getting hacked and they um then someone like takes your account and they're posting things about Bitcoin. And if they get three people from your account to go give them money and they do that in mass for like 10,000 people, they've made a bunch of money. Yeah. So no, it's not about you. No one maybe it's cares about you. having your you're account. Just a meme, right? Yeah. right. But so you're part the like, numbers game for that. Right. Like. Exactly. <laughs> so multi-factor authentication is the easiest thing that you can do on everything to keep your account safe and yours. Um, so I would say that's step one. But I definitely think it's worthwhile to every once in a while go back through your profile and everything you've posted. But you should also look at 
Like, have you ever tried to stalk yourself on Google? Like, Google yourself. You would be (laughs) shocked and appalled at what's out there and what's also public domain. So that can be part of my job. Sometimes we'll do it for C-suite members of the Fortune 500 where we basically stalk them. And I'll go online and try to find everything about you that I can (laughs) and I'll make a report on it. Crazy. Yeah, I found um, pictures of this one guy's underage daughter out drinking. Really? Yeah, so you would be surprised. Uh, When you buy a house, your address, that title information is public domain. Your phone number is out there. Your address, Zillow pictures of your address. You can have those taken down, by the way. Oh, can you really? Mm -hmm. You can have your house blurred on Google Maps. You want to know what's fucked up? Wait, you can have your house blurred on Google Maps? Yep. I had an employer who, when they would set up an interview, like a face-to-face interview, and you had your information, would do a Google search of your house. Like, look at the picture of your house. Kind of fucked yeah. up, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Kind of fucked up. Or like before meetings, they would, they would if they knew it had your address or something, they would look and see where you live to, to get a gauge on how like successful the business owner was. Oh, wow. Fucked up, right? It is. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, so when I first started teaching, and this was like 2005, I had joined Facebook at college because our sinus where I went was one of the first schools that was in the Facebook network because this is when Facebook just started. It was only to select colleges that were part of this network. And so our sinus happened to be one of them. So I joined Facebook and uh, I (laughs) I had somebody make a page about me on campus that was like oh they called them uh jay yoder's groupies and they were just so that i'd be you walking around campus that? i'm walking around campus and people would just be like like hey there's the guy and i'm like what oh, are you talking oh, about it, you didn't have you didn't have someone created it happened to you somebody yeah, somebody created this page okay okay, okay. calling themselves my okay. groupies and you were getting some cloud and people were just like noticing it was very unnerving because it wasn't a time when this was happening mm-hmm. so i'm just going to the gym going to the hall going to the dining hall wherever uh one of those is more believable uh but i was <laughs> <laughs> i was like but they were, but like, it was just unnerving that like, I'm like, boy, who is this? And it was just this girl that I guess had a crush on me or whatever. Jesus. And like put this thing out there. And it was funny because. Creepy, right? Yeah. Creepy. I got Google to yourself. be, I got to, might still be up. I got to be a teacher. Well, I got to, to O and J started teaching the kids start talking about Facebook. And I'm like, what do you guys know about Facebook? This is just for colleges. They're like, oh, no, no, no Mr. No, Yoder, this is big for time. everybody now. And the look on what if you could have just taken a photo of my face in that <laughs> moment, because all the stuff that was on Facebook of the, like, the stuff and like I wasn't crazy in college, but like I, you I experienced you college uh, and uh, and we were writing all sorts of stuff on there. People message stuff on your board. They're not thinking anything of it. We're not thinking about digital footprint. No. None of that. So I had to contact Facebook because I couldn't get into my Facebook account because it was tough to my or sinus account which was no longer active wow. and i was like and the picture my profile picture of me at the time was me at graduation with wearing like a cowboy hat with these like two girls kissing me on each cheek <laughs> like that was my profile wow. picture and i was like i need to change this immediately that was like my biggest concern was this i was like presenting this image as a young professional and, and if they searched me in that moment like i like not like it would have it wouldn't have been a good look you know yeah. and that was the first time i was like oh man i gotta i gotta think about the future Pro- yeah something so, like, l- l- let me ask you this this is the one that i how bad are like the message boards and the chats and all that shit that you can pick up on like dark web and stuff how bad how do you that? even get to Wait, the dark web on. stay tuned we'll be right back Break down what some is the, the dark, dark web, web shit? Well, that like, was going to be my question. In that reference, now I can kind of understand. Would you at all deal with the dark web or need to deal with those types of things? Torrent, you know, going for something like that. Can you sell a yeah. kidney? Come on, I want the yeah. good stuff. Yeah, absolutely you can. You can do all that stuff yeah. on the dark web yes. for sure. Don't try to go on it. That's no. the best advice that I can give. Um, and if you think that because you have a Mac, it can't get viruses, you are sorely mistaken. I hate that they advertise that. But the dark web, I mean, you can do anything on there. People yep. sell organs for sure. I would say in the context of my job, the biggest thing is bulk selling data. If you mm-hmm. get ransomware or something and all that data is gone and for a company, that's bad. But that's tens of thousands of individual people, your lives. If it's your company, it's it's your insurance information, your kids. Like we just had that. We just had that happen. So, so, so 
And then that's being sold like like you said, maybe no one wants your data, but you're worth like 10 cents. So is it the same? In, like, is there a oh, username no. and password? Is it the same internet it's a, or is it something else? I want to know how you get there. Yeah, Where's well, there a what's door? What's username so... and password for the dark no web? Way. Is, yeah. <laughs> All right. Can't talk about No, don't Damn tell it. me that. But, Listen, but is, it like a diff- is it like a different internet or is it the same internet? Just other paths that you can take. Do you, it, you understand what I'm saying? Great. This is great. Yeah, it's the same. I mean, it's still the internet. <laughs> it's yeah. like, still the internet. Yeah, but it's still you, the. I knew. I, I was. But like, you get what you, like, you do. Sounded, get what I'm, I'm saying. I'm with him. I know he sounded dumb right now, but I'm still with him. No, yeah. that's. Is there another <laughs> internet? Sarah, could you please explain how what that is first? <laughs> because it's <laughs> I'm on fire. And is there another internet? <laughs> you got to make another in internet. 40s, okay. <laughs> I know. I, listen, I know. But we're doing this. We're doing this. Make another internet. Like you guys are laughing, but you don't know the fucking answer. No, 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 no. You have no idea. And you, it's a good, I've been on the dark web. I understand. Yeah, I, know, I know. I get the but, dark web, but can you make another internet? I, Sarah, please take this. I love this question. No, I mean, there's one internet. It was and created by the government originally, and then they were just like, here, have okay. this. It's and just you, restricted on how that how you get there. Yes. And you, you could do that again. Well, so it's like a city. So it's like if, if we make an analogy, it's like a city and there are neighborhoods that we don't tend to go to. And those paths are overgrown. So they're not obvious okay. to find. But okay. if you push back the brush, you can you're, go down that path. I, I understand yes. it. But could you make another Internet? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're laughing. Can you create another me, galaxy? It didn't exist. Yes. And they made one that existed. Can you make another one that exists? Or is it like, is it doable? Isn't that what parlor is? It's not right. No, <laughs> I'm trying to like conceptualize that. Yeah, that all I think it would yeah. still be. No, it would still be the part internet. of this. You world? would just make them yeah. not routable to one another. Yeah, but you would. Yeah, I don't know. These are things I'm not qualified to say. <laughs> uh, the hard hitting questions no, coming. Out I don't you. use the dark web too much. I think oh. sometimes. Companies will hire us to try to buy back something out mm-hmm. there or to see what we can find out there. Um, that's a pretty small fraction of it, but that's definitely something that we do. Um, but it's the bulk yeah. data. I mean, that and that happened. Our school right. district had that happen where somebody breached, got in, and now all the teachers are getting... We had to freeze all our credit accounts. My wife just had a letter come yesterday. Oh, someone tried to open an, uh, a credit card and felt Wells Fargo sent us a letter. Oh, someone tried to open a credit card, but because your credit is free, frozen, we couldn't do that. So thankfully, we... you know, But all these people now are altering their lives because that's the new way of like burglary rising people right. is getting our social getting our kids yeah. i have you know it's just crazy that it's so easy to get that information like my mom i'm constantly worried as like i'm taking parenting my my mother now too because there's a, a grown human who doesn't get it and she's clicking on things she thinks it's fedex and i'm trying to teach her that she has to hit like the carrot to see that did fedex really send this to you it looks like fedex but yeah. it wasn't sent by she's FedEx. Got see, this is where i think people are going wrong if Please. you try to teach people like what's a scam and what's not they're eventually going to fall for a scam my thing especially with your social security number among other things but that is your crown jewel don't ever give it ever anytime no matter what get used to saying i don't feel comfortable sharing this by email or by phone like i i would rather tell like your parents no one will ever ask you for your credit card number over email um so don't no one will ever ask you for your social security number over email if you get a link about your package something's wrong with your package Go log into the website on your own and and look yourself. Don't just don't click any link that Mm -hmm. you get. If you get a customer service number in an email, go Google the customer service number yourself and do it that way. And if you operate that way, that I'm never going to give up this information unless like I'm in person buying a car or a house or opening a line of credit type of thing. um, You're going to have a lot better success. I've definitely ignored a lot of people's emails that were probably legitimate. Uh, My favorite story of that is I work for a cybersecurity company. And for our 11th anniversary, we got cookies. And so they had this bakery send everyone cookies that we all got to decorate as like this contest celebration. 
Well, they didn't tell any of us this was happening. And then all of a sudden we all get an email that your cookies are on their way to your house. Like oh, click shit. here to track this delivery. And every single person in the company rewards this phishing. Like I get an email that's legitimate. I'm like, nah, I don't believe you. I don't believe you unless I'm expecting it or I contacted you. Yeah, that's okay. right. That's I just got to operate that way. I just got one while we were sitting here from Facebook. There's a message that will try to get you to say that your uh, account is going to be deleted. It's happening. So, it so yeah, it's happening. I got the call from, so I work for this comedy school up in New York and the person who's the social media manager keeps calling me to be like, Hey, I'm getting these messages. And it's like guest 1591 yeah. Facebook messages. And, but it's like, it's happening so frequently. Yeah. And she's so nervous. She's like, is our account going to get, from? I'm like, no, I'm like guest one five nine seven is telling right. you that they're like, no, I'm that's a scam. Yeah. I'm trying to send the articles that are like showing why it's a scam. Like to, yeah. but you're right it's i so can't tough. yeah it, but yeah. it's like what do you do you just report them but then they just create a new it's you know they just it's like whack-a-mole they just keep popping yeah. up to an extent except for your, your own parents it's like thank goodness for elderly people because it's like the bear analogy like as long as some people are clicking on the nigerian prince email maybe they won't get any better <laughs> but the less people click on it the better they get okay. my company does fishing exercises they are so convincing that you would not know it was different from regular email you I, wouldn't i hate when it's like somebody's like the messenger and you know they've been hacked but they message you and you know like we would never have had they would had never have started this conversation <laughs> like, I, I love to have a conversation with them like i love see i don't even do that because can they get through that if you start having conversations with these people through on like in messenger or do they have access to your shit no no, no. i don't necessarily recommend it you're you don't know who you're messing with, but it can be entertaining. And I definitely oh, do it. <laughs> so two people, I've uh, James Veach is this guy I've seen do Ted talks on yeah. it where he like, he basically shows you in a Ted talk how he messed with the Nigerian Prince email and he did code word and he like baited them and played along. And it's really funny. So you have a ch chance to check it out. Um, it's really funny. And then the other one is there's this guy, YouTuber who basically does, uses like a voice synthesizer and he gets these people who usually called elderly people to try to get them to go buy gift cards mm -hmm. and then give them the gift card numbers from the back. Yep. And he pretends to be an old grandma and he keeps these guys on the phone for hours. And that's his whole thing is to mess with these people in these call centers who are job is to hack. But he uh, he doesn't oh, know he's oh, messing he plays with the victim. OK, he, yeah, like, he this isn't he's cool, like Jay. Bates them. this whole time. I'm like, this isn't cool. Man. No, like, no, no. He's, he's playing. The he's victim, doing. Man. They're, they're busy. Just working so hard. See, I, I don't like to mess with any of that because I feel like there's probably like high levels of like psychological like fuckery. And I don't want to like lose. It's, so I don't I, I, I answer like four email addresses and that's it. It's, Everything else gets deleted. Yeah, it's definitely better not to engage with scammers. Um, there's something sometimes people call it like hacktivism, hacking, hacking back for good. A lot of people in cybersecurity like will engage scenario. scammers oh. because okay. the more time they're talking to you, less time that they're talking exactly. to other people. Was, yep. So I definitely understand that and partake in it myself. I had a friend whose Instagram was hacked and well, the guy hacked her phone, basically convinced her to download an app that would have full access to her phone. And he was posting her nudes on Instagram saying, if you don't pay me, I'll I'm going to keep I'll posting go. them or they're okay. going to get worse. So they started off blurred. And so I started messaging the guy and I was like, Oh, this is so cool what you're doing. Like, how did you do that? And I just kind of goaded this person into talking to me and got them to give me a bunch of information and I reported it to the FBI and I told him and he was like well the FBI is probably not going to come after me which is true and one of our big problems so there's not a lot of repercussions for people doing things like that mm. and I listed out all the things he'd be guilty for and was like you decide if it's worth it and he never posted anything again like wow. let the account go that's a win huh you feel good about that right yeah it's i would just, feel awesome about that that's it's awesome. frustrating that's... this whole concept of hacking back though because that's still illegal okay so like now when someone hacking. does something like that like i want to go after you you know what i mean i want to find out who you are i want to fish you like mm -hmm. but we have a very important code of conduct really of you Being ethical yes okay. you learn you learn things that could do a lot of bad and you need to do good with those things wow. yeah <laughs> like the liam neeson of yeah like, yeah, yeah very specific good luck yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So, so, so the, but the, the dark web, like back to that is nasty. <laughs> it's like, like how bad it, like, I, I don't, I don't want to go there, but like, I, I, how bad is I, it? Like, can you try to quantify or like put into words how bad it really is? It's like the perch in the, the internet. Yeah, no, I can't honestly. Okay. I can't answer that. So it's that bad. I have an episode for you to watch if you really want to see what you can find. I, 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 just, I just, is there, I just, like, it's, I do, it's like yeah, the worst thing yes. ever. Send Murder. me that link now. I everything. See I want to see it. It's on our Patreon. Yeah, it's terrible. It's really yeah. bad. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. problem is like, once you, once you, on, I once you know some of those things, like, you know, as a parent, like, once my kid knows some things, you can't unknow things. Yeah. So maybe we don't, I don't want to know. No, I don't think I do. I don't, I don't think I want to open that. Yeah. Open that. with a Pandora's box, I call it, right? I don't want to open that fucking. No. But I just want to know if you could put it in. Like I, I, I don't know. I just. What's the problem? I, I think know. a lot of what we're talking about and, and my thinking of why I wanted to have this be an episode is parents are so busy doing a million things. We're working. We're, we're trying to do our own passions and pursue our own things, but we're also trying to be good parents and on top of things and to have a cybersecurity. I mean, most parents are struggling just to keep their kids in check in real life yeah. in IRL. As the cool kids, uh, like but it. I knew you were we, going to use slang. Remember, I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, but a lot of us are a lot of us parents are like our Riz is mid at best. <laughs> okay. No, okay. Like we just I think don't. You use that. I think you use at that the end of this. <laughs> I think I use that. No, 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 dead ass. Okay, on okay. God. Okay. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> he hasn't been in the classroom in a minute. He's a little rusty. You, got, you better get back in the classroom, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Next week, baby. <laughs> on God. I'm gonna, yeah. uh, but no, but I mean, like, that's my thing. I think we're so overwhelmed. Like, I know I personally, if my kids bring something up, I know I know enough, but it's only because I've been teaching and in technology because I can't bring something into the classroom. I'm like, as a teacher, you're like a step parent. You know what I mean? Like you, uh, like you have to still pretend like you're a parent, but so I have to. Go, I can't just pull something up for the kids on YouTube without having previewed it ahead of time. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get some trouble. So there's a mm-hmm. site, Common Sense Media, that is really great, and it has a site for parents and for educators where you can put in an app, a game, or something, and they tell you the pros and cons, what people are saying, what educators are saying. So you can do, but like parents, sometimes it's an extra step, and you want to just trust. Like my mom, trust me, she got me a computer got me the internet got me aol sent me on my way i did some stuff i am not proud of so i'm just saying like you give people too much latitude it now the stakes are too high back then whatever now the stakes are too high because there's just too much out there well yeah like back then there wasn't an algorithm that was programmed to like win yeah. And like get you and hook you and hold you. And like, ever since the that, Roblox that didn't exist, the girls are on the tablet. I've they're, noticed they're the girls are on the more. tablets more. And now I'm like, ah, I just opened this box and now I can't yeah. close it, you know, but yeah. I can still do stuff like screen time and you know, it got to be off. You can only spend so many two hours a day or, you know, you decide how you're yeah. going to spread that out. Well, that's a good question, I guess, because I don't know in terms of the corporate stuff, but any, any other advice you would give these two? for specifically dealing with the young children coming from a parenting perspective. Obviously I think you've shared the not showing the face or not some, but is there anything you come in contact with in your experience that you would share directly with parents? Yeah. I think that really anything that a child wants to do online anymore, there's some kind of parental control. I think with any kind of technology, it's always like, let's innovate, 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 and we'll face the consequences later, which we're probably seeing right now with, AI use, but definitely with things like Instagram and how much time kids are spending on it, what it's doing to self-esteem. There's bullying. supposed to be huge, sorry. There's supposed to be huge. Sure. Um, there's supposed to be huge pieces coming out now, like legis- like Instagram Meta said that they're now changing what's being put out to 13 and ab- and below. Yes. I mean, that's that was just recent news. But like, do you have any information about like what that's going to look like? What is that going to mean for the average 13 year old? Do you know? Have you heard anything? Specific specifically about what some of those changes are? Yeah, I think Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, although I don't recommend that one at all, but inevitable. Um, They all have like a a kid realm, kid safe usage. And I think um, it's more restricted on what they can see, um, certain content that's available to them. I think the biggest things are controlling what apps kids would have or not have and what sites they're able to use. Yeah. So 
Google and Apple, and I'm sure others have apps and restrictions that you can put in place on those devices themselves. Then within the apps, they have different controls that would help. And, but the parents not going to know. The parents not going to know. You're, the kids going to like talk the parent out of like because they're going to go to the store, get them the phone. They're going to say, "There's well, stuff I can put on this, right?" And nobody's going to walk them through that. And then ultimately, the well, kids going to have free reign. I think a couple of things. I think one is, uh, I mean, we figured it out. You know, it was yeah. just a different hustle. We had we had VHSs of porn. We had weed. We had you know what I mean. We just we did it differently. You know what I mean. So they're gonna be they're gonna find ways to to trick and, and get around. They're gonna they're gonna defeat that. Um, fuck, I had something to say about social think, media, you, but I forgot. But I mean, maybe too though. It's on the parent. You know, it's on us if we care that much. <sighs> And we're that concerned, then we can we'll step up our game. We'll make it a priority. It's like anything. You got to make it a priority. If you don't, if you don't make it a priority, then I guess you know it's not going to happen. I think the the I think for the parents, this is what I was going to say for the parents, you have to be so extremely disciplined with screen time uh, limits because the peace of mind and the quiet is addictive to us. So when they're quiet for twenty five minutes straight. They haven't made any, it's going to end up being 25 and a half minutes, 27 minutes, 36 minutes. And it's going to get longer and longer because you're going to be so happy that no one's bothering you. And I know it sounds kind of funny, but like you, it's peaceful. It's quiet. You can get stuff done. You can send your emails. You can grade your papers. You can do, you can do the laundry and you got to remind yourself that you got to get back in there and parent also when it's about to get fucking man. Yep. It's, it's tough. It's yeah. I mean, that's, that's the other thing is now I think as we get older and, you know, did your parents have stuff in place for you when you were growing up? No, like, I think I grew up in that era of, we didn't quite know the consequences yet. Um, but luckily social media wasn't really a thing till I was in high school, middle school, I think Facebook, but um, no, and I definitely spent too much time on it. I got bullied on I am like it, it was awful. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a different plane. I definitely understand the I don't understand. I'm glad I don't have to deal with the struggle of screen time. But as a babysitter, I babysat a bunch of different kids in the neighborhood and one group of kids. I don't know if they wanted to make it easier for me, but they let the kids have the iPads. They didn't talk to me the whole time I was there unless they were asking me to help them complete like a level of their game that they couldn't <laughs> wow. call. So, I don't even remember their names. They probably don't remember me at all. Yeah. But I had another group of kids that the parents were like, we don't have to do it. No iPads while she's here. <laughs> we're banning yeah. her. No iPads. Yep. I loved it. We would like play baseball in the yeah. basement and run around. And I have like a connection with them still to this day. And so I definitely think like getting off the iPad and living yeah, in the moment is important. But I think that's the problem to parenting. You know, you give them an iPad so I don't have to. So I need peace yeah, and quiet for that time. Quiet. Let me give them, let me give them an think. iPad. We fought that like in the car rides. We don't do it on like road trips. We took a long road trip to Kansas this summer. We it was very sparingly that I think on the ride home after we had already been through 13 states and you in broke, the car forever, broke, broke. I eventually did something where I, put on a hot spot for like 30 minutes and I let them go. And it was like, I gave them the world. Yeah. But I think you're now, if you think down the road, let's say you're a parent one day, how do you think all of what you have, like, that's going to be so interesting. I think for what your kids would have to deal with, with all of that, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah. <laughs> I don't look forward to it. I'm definitely the cyber equivalent of like the person with the bunker, you know, yeah. like <laughs> we all are we're the most paranoid people. Like, yeah. um, and, you know, for good reason. But uh, I remember asking my parents because I was curious, you know, what how did you decide to let me have a cell phone to have Facebook? And they were saying, you know, we didn't want you to resent us and we didn't want the social repercussions of everyone around you having this thing that we're not letting you have. Yes. So it is such a balance. And damn, yeah, I'm not yeah, looking forward yeah. to making you got, that well, decision. My daughter asked me the other day, when can I have a cell phone? She's 10. I'm like, oh, sweetheart, we're not talking about that right now. And it's going to get more intense. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going to get crazier. The, the, right, the Oculus uh, and AI and all that stuff mm -hmm. in 20 years, that's going to be fucking mind-blowing yeah we're our, gonna be you and i are gonna be clueless i, I did our schools are well, at least some of the schools now like are even doing the thing where they're putting making them put it in the box like when you go to a, a concert right now. we've talked about this yeah. yeah yeah so it's like i think that helps because then it's like well you can't use it at school so i'm not worried about it i know you're at school i know the bus you ride or i'm also at school so i'm hoping we can get to high school before the cell phone and so you can Sorry, go ahead. No, I just said good luck. I'm done. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah go. Well, no, but I feel like, Sarah, so in my limited knowledge, right, but the young phones, we can design software hardware. Like, you can get a phone for a kid 
and lock that phone in. That's that's in my understanding of tech. If you don't know that, you can get a phone where it's like that's not they're not going to be able to access things. They're not going to be able to get to apps that aren't registered, like that kind of thing. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It's the probably the danger place is teenagehood, where you're like, hey, I'm about to give you a phone that is just a computer. Yeah, it's a loaded weapon. So that's where the parents, I think, is what to your point. You have to be. You can. Sorry, would you agree that maybe when they're younger, you can get something that's kind of foolproof. You can lock everything down on a phone, and it's when the parent really needs to get to that teenage part when they're starting to get there. The That's rele- when the you need to be like, hey, I need to actually do a bunch of stuff on this phone and childproof it and get to so they can't see things. Well, the yeah, release, exactly. I think the part oh, of it, okay. like for I'm part of some of the people, the parents I've talked that have like teenagers, too, is there are apps that the family is on where you share location, where you right. share like they can see how fast they're driving if they're in a yeah, car, yeah, see where they are. And they so see, there's yeah. this agreement that you stay on it. And like I've talked to some of the teenagers and they're like, yeah, they just keep their locate. They know that I'm seeing their location. They know that I can see their stuff. And there's an agreement that, you know, I can look at, I get to look through their cell phone once a month or whatever. Yeah. Like, But I guess a lot of it starts with your parenting style. If you're trying to let the app parent for you, then you're in trouble. Like I set up an Apple ID for my daughter because my mom got a new phone. So they were like, oh, you can just set up an Apple ID. And when you put her birthday in, it automatically goes to a child account. And so I was able to access some of the parental controls. I'm hopeful because at least I'm tech savvy, but I'm scared for the parents who aren't tech savvy. Right. And I'm hopeful that the user experience is going to get a lot easier. Right. Yeah. Let's come to my point. Yeah. Sarah, you think, think, go ahead, please. Yes. I do think it's crazy how much we're all online and how many devices everyone has. And most people have absolutely no idea how to use them or how they work for sure. I do think all that's getting easier. Like you said, even with the, it automatically registering that this is the device of a child. But I wanted to go back to what you said with like teenagers and having their location and knowing how fast they're driving. What about that part of childhood that's like sneaking out? You know, do you think that's like something that you should be able to do like be on your own, maybe make kind of a poor choice, like fail young, Uh, figure it out. Is that, I I, I think you're right. I think you're right. I agree with you. (laughs) It's like, it's this fine balance of how do I let them live and be kids? But, I also, it's also not the same world. It's not the same world. But the thing is, it's never going to be the same world. Yeah, like I can't step you don't in the think same your mom was twice. scared. Yeah, you don't think your mom was scared to, sh- to death, like the shit that you were getting into and could have got into. And like I know the shit that we were doing. Why we weren't doing? Yeah. My mom knew she'd be. F- She's like ASL was the least of yeah, our that was least, that, was, that was the least of her worries. I, I'll keep it real. I mean, we I grew we grew up in an era where you left your house at eight o'clock on a bicycle with like seven dollars and some water. And then you showed back up at the every day was just a journey in the world. Yeah. They were scared to death. Albert would come back with 20 bucks and like, <laughs> yeah. and candy. she's like, yo, dude, what did you do? <laughs> yeah. Seriously. So what did you do? You made thing money? Now, but it's not the same thing, but it's we're, every parent's always going to have that battle. My yeah. opinion, but yeah, it is, it, it is, is scary. Nonetheless, it is scary. And then when you are the parent, that's why I think it's so, that's why there's like, it, you know, there's these tropes we know about it because at the, at the end of the day, there's these struggles that, at, you know, like we talked about in our first episode where it was sort of like it's the tuning fork. If you're coming at it from an honest concern, if you have open relationship with your kids, if you talk and you play board games with your kids and you connect with your kids. My wife actually started playing Roblox like she's on Roblox. with I, now. I, I, I'm on So Roblox now it's like so I won't. I refuse. But. Uh, but I like that she's on there because they actually she said she freaked them out the one day because she knew she was on. They f- they found her in the virtual world. Mm-hmm. So I think sharing the experience with them if they're going to do it is important. So I got to maybe get my out of my curmudgeon yeah. self. Join them and do Play that. Play the game shoulder to shoulder. It's a lot different than looking over their shoulder. But if we, if, yeah, if we right invest, down. if we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we invest in that. If we listen to the tuning fork inside, we know, like, don't go to the dark web. Al, I know you want to know more I'm about not, it. I'm don't not going to dabble. I don't even know how to get there. See, mm-hmm. but, but like we have to, to, we have to, yeah, we have to fight that because I think we all know right from wrong, and I gotta trust. Hopefully, that my kids know right from wrong, and uh, I, I still think that as a girl dad, I'm gonna have a harder time. And with my older daughter, I don't know how how susceptible she might be to people, so I think I'm always gonna have a higher guard up for her. So I might not let her make some of those same mistakes. I don't know. I don't know if I'm willing to. And that's scary. 
it's scary to say, but it's the, you know, it's like parenting is no joke. It is no, like, it's fucked up, man. you know, I can understand why you're like, oh, let me just pass it off. Or I can understand, like, right. they know me now. I can't leave now. They know yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> so tough to leave now. It would be so messed up if you did. It would be so messed up. No, I love We should you. do like, some positive things. Let's do a wrap up of like positive. Yeah, what's, what's going good on? Things good things for on parents. The, on, the, on the web. Yeah. Well, like, I thought that was positive. Where you got to you got to make connections. You no, that was, that was positive. Into them. You got to so, be saying more involved. We're asking about the dark web. And we're asking about the predators sure. and a- American Sign Language and all that shit. It's, He's like, <laughs> is there anything good about yeah, technology? What is it, there are yeah. many good things. That's okay. why we're all on it all the time, except That's for true. the like addictive part of it. So, but the connection with people you would never yes. meet otherwise, the staying in touch with relatives that maybe you couldn't get to and see, especially during sure. COVID. I kind of meant to go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, I put an air tag in my checked bag, my luggage. Nice. So I can never lose it. Like, I got air tag in my wallet. Yeah, it does. Have I used to leave it here all the, time. all the time. Never. You can do all your banking stuff from home. I oh, mean, there's I, I, I love cashing a check from my kitchen counter with my camera. Phone. Yeah, it's oh always great. God. Yeah, it's always great. I kind of meant for parents, though. I kind of like, hey, parents, like you can lock down a phone. You can get a kid's phone. And then when they come home, TJ, teenager, you have to kind of get a teenager phone. Like you got to get one that, that, that I'm trying tablet. to assure parents because I feel like this is a well. I love like well, if you think about Vishnu's app, what we did last season, we had Vishnu on there. I thought he had a smart thing. The minute they come home, they yeah, they drop it on the thing because then they have to have family time. Right, and then to your point, and trying to make it as easy as you can for parents because that's they got a lot of things to deal with. If yeah. they just have a device that they know is teenage proof but allows them certain things, and as they get older, they'll be allowed more things. Like that would yeah. assure like you can do it with yeah. a certain device. That's and, all. And I take I take. Some and when I have a conversation, even with my, you know, seven year old, like when I take talk to her, like she gets it. Like when I'm like trying to explain why like something can't happen or whatever, like she's like, oh, yeah, it's because of this. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know if we'll always have these great conversations, but no. right now, like we're having these open conversations. I was joking in the other episode, I drove fast the other day and she's like, that was aggressive. And I was like, yes, sweetheart, that was aggressive. And I was like, I, yeah, I explained to her why. And so was the dark web. So and we're so both dark have, web. We're both no. Do that again. But yeah, so I'm never going to mention the dark web to my daughters. No. <laughs> Although I'm pretty sure my daughter, Lisi, has already found it. Yeah, I mean, you're asking for it <laughs> if you go on there. Or yeah. like those companies that post like we are... We have the most secure software. Uh, LifeLock. Put a target on your back. Oh, the LifeLock. Should we do LifeLock? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, he got well, hacked, right? Didn't he get in trouble? Oh, yeah. They up? did that marketing campaign where yeah. he was like, I'm so sure that you can't steal my identity. Here is my social security number. And he put it on trucks. On the side of a bus. Billboards. Right? Yeah, like yep. That. He had his identity stolen 13 times, I think. Wow. So, yeah. Don't put a target <laughs> on your kid. back like that. I'm pretty sure my brother went on the dark web in high school thinking he was going to be some hacker, get involved in some stuff, and he bricked that laptop. They just completely, or desktop, wow. they completely went after oh, it. Oh, it just, just shredded yeah. it up from yeah. the inside out. You need a couple of things to reassure wow. everybody. We were talking about it like it's a mythical beast. Like, you need a couple of things. You need to know what you're doing to actually even get on it. Yeah. Be, yes. Yeah. So, that makes like, you can't do it from your cell phone. Everyone breathe. Yeah. Everyone breathe. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There's a reason that it's kept in the dark from, yeah. from people like Al and I. And that's yeah, You're not just going to walk into <laughs> the dark. Dark web, just, you know, that's not just going to drive the minivan <laughs> yeah. to that part of town by accident. <laughs> yeah, remember we had faces of death when you were younger. Don't do this. Oh, right. oh wait, that? yeah, I was going to ask that one was other. Fucked up. <laughs> that was. The... I was going to ask one other messed up question <laughs> before before we lose yeah. before we get rid of Sarah. So now. <laughs> I just said you just said before you get rid of Sarah, yeah. <laughs> Sarah. sending me to the dark web. web. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you just go to the dark web. So these guys that want like so these guys that you're ethically hacking at your company, they have these stuff. Obviously, they're going to have things on their computer that they don't want found. Like, is there a way for daddy to hide his yeah. stash in a safe place That's where right. where like it could then self-destruct when they die because you don't have sure. to have the buddy who you have to give your you know that everybody should have a buddy that yeah. comes in and like clean stuff up for them yeah. is there a digital like w- like safe way to hide oh yeah well first of all incognito mode and if you're not using that for things that you don't want seen well i can't help you <laughs> what do i duck duck go um sure. is that the same thing i don't uh, no I haven't actually used it yet. Well, incognito mode won't maintain your cookies, won't maintain your browser history. So that's just a good step one. But anything really encrypted, if you you have the password to that, if no one else has the password, 
they Good. they can't get access to it. So, so there's like apps that do that. You could have a drive that's encrypted. So I know a guy. Mm -hmm. Know a guy. He had an Apple phone and he got another Apple phone. Mm -hmm. And uh, he then had his kid find an ad that came up because they had access the browser on the other phone. And yep. they were like saying like, so I guess you got to really like when you're tied to devices, people got to realize there's like a tethering. That mm -hmm. Apple gets sometimes. everyone in trouble. Don't. You know how many people got in trouble with, with <laughs> iPhones and That's iPads? <laughs> they had, yeah. Remember when people, everyone's getting caught with their i, i their iPads were singing to their iPhones? Am I the only one who remembers? No, but that's all I'm saying. Like I, that's yeah, the part that Apple's I was the like, worst. You have to like what what my friend learned is what you have to do is you have to go into settings and you have to erase mm -hmm. all like before you give that second phone that you no longer are using. You got to make sure you factory reset that. Yeah, yeah you need to oh, re-image yeah, any. If you're gonna get rid of you your old phone, that's so. I think sometimes mm -hmm. those mistakes are made uh -huh. by people. People and you know, I yeah. have friends, is what I'm saying. That of course, do that. but Naturally. fun fact if you're your kids like, are in therapy now, right? You're going to be <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sir. Go ahead. No, you're good. So, if you if you delete something on a like, even if you permanently delete it off of a system, it's not permanently gone until that memory space gets overwritten by something else. So, anything deleted could be recovered in theory. So, if, if you did something on a laptop that you really don't want anyone to see, like right. reimage it and then like smash, and then smash, smash it. I was going to say, have to wait, you have to wait till somebody taped over the wedding it. with the football game before you're. <laughs> yeah, no, that, exactly. That makes sense. Yes, That's okay. the best way right to do it. That, and you got to smash it. That makes sense. That's the only way. Yeah. Burn it? Do you have to have to burn it too? You have to drink it. You're gonna have to well, you can't burn it. That's drink. probably like you're probably like yeah, don't do that. putting some stuff in the air you shouldn't be doing, right? Yeah. What are Might you be doing? Kind of fun. I don't know. <laughs> Let's not get into any further questions because now you're just now like, what like was on this hard yeah, yeah, yeah. How bad was are we it? aiding How and abetting a friend? criminal? Like, yeah. yeah. This guy. This, this guy, guy, man. He got up to some nefarious mess. Yeah. Well, uh, well, uh, do you, oh, well, Sarah, you know, you're not a comedian, but you, 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 she, she came out to one of my, she came out to the fat lady brewing in Manionka. Oh yeah. There. You were there. Yeah. She came nice. out. I was uh, there. Oh, that's right. You were there. Too. I was there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, uh, so Sarah doesn't, so usually we have to have the comedian like promote themselves, but like, since you're not a comedian, uh, we don't have to. Anything you want to share? Anything Is there an interesting fact about you we should yeah. know? You got any, did you write a joke that maybe you want to share? You got anything? <laughs> Did I write it? No, I didn't write it. Do you do yeah, any service? Do you do any private like oh, services? Any like, do you have your own little business of like for computers consulting or no? Computers. Not I do not. Okay. I'm not exactly. I, I definitely, I feel like the new equivalent of like your doctor, friend or family member, like at Thanksgiving, and you're oh, like, can you look at my knee? It up. hurts. Yeah. It's like, should I click this link? Or they'll be like, is oh, this my God, router? So it's like, that's your cable annoying, box. Right? But <laughs> um, so yeah, if anyone has any questions, I'm always open to answering or helping how I can messaging you. I was like, I got a bunch about the dark. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. no, I'm, done. I'm done. I'm never going to talk about it again. I'm, I'm done. I'm not fucking with it. Well, you have a, you want, what, so what about you? You have any shows coming up? What do you got? Um, well, I, I said on the last one, so I think I'll come on this one, but Helium and Biggest Little Show, Wisecrackers. Um, I'll be in New York for a uh, Gracie Canaan show and there's probably some other stuff I'm forgetting, but yeah, you know, she like that. The February, oh, I'm, I'm excited. February 10th. I have a bunch of students who were in my tech pack who she, she came to the club that I had where I had during the pandemic where I had kids like helping, you know, the teachers use technology and kids. I have a bunch that went on to Rochester to RIT, which is a, oh, yeah. so, they're familiar with it. so I'm Tigers. actually going to be up there at the Carlson on February 10th with my buddy Gasper. So I hit a bunch of them up. So I'm hoping that like, not that they'll come to the show, but that will like hang out or do something. And cause I'm excited to see what they're up to. Cause they're, they were, people that like i really got into seeing what technology would be interesting because i think some of them probably i'll probably get some more dish on the dark web yeah, yeah it'll be easy. so that way we can, <laughs> you and i can continue there's this plenty of bad stuff on the light web <laughs> i don't think you know <laughs> that's true that is true that is true well thank you sarah we appreciate you guys stopping by and, and thank you very yeah, much yeah thanks for having me this was a blast thank you beautiful Thank you for listening to the dads for once give these daddies a break and maybe follow subscribe like and comment to the dads on instagram and youtube at seriously dad pod rate and review seriously dad podcast on spotify 
iTunes, Amazon Music, and everywhere you get your podcasts. Seriously, lad? How you doing? This is Neil Wood from the Cult of Us podcast. Speaking on behalf of Drop 10 Media Network, the network you're currently listening to. Make sure to check out all the other podcasts on the network. You can go to drop10.com to check them all out. Make sure to like, subscribe on everything that you see Drop 10 on. We appreciate it. Go to drop10.com now. This has been a Drop 10 Media Production.